It says, accept the way God does things. For who can straighten what he has made crooked? Enjoy prosperity while you can, but when hard times strike, realize that both come from God. Remember that nothing is certain in this life. Amen. So this scripture, of course, comes from uh, the wisest man that ever lived beside Jesus. And he is uh, Solomon telling us that we should accept what God allows. And this is something that we hear all the time. But when hard times strike, it becomes more difficult for us to do that. But we must learn how to lean on God. We must learn how to trust in God because ultimately God is in control. As we see around our world, there is so much fear, there is so much worrying, there is so much that is happening because of this coronavirus. I, I um, Sometimes I drive Lyft, and when I, I've been driving this past weekend and this past week, and I pick up a lot of people, and that's always the first topic of conversation. They're either saying, what do you think about this coronavirus? Or they're expressing their fear or their worry based on what's going to happen. Because not only is this virus rampant in the land, whether you believe that it's, it's very rampant or it's being overhyped, it's out there. And, and it's, it's, it's whether people are worried about catching that or they're worried about what's going to happen because their jobs are shutting down. Now, of course, we as the people of God are not immune to what's happening because we also work secular jobs that have probably been uh, shut down or or, or placed at home for the time being, so things are up in the air. But the difference is that we don't respond to trouble the way that the world does. Because the, when the world encounters trouble, their first response is fear. And I, I, I want to declare that fear is more contagious than this coronavirus is. Yes. Fear spreads faster and quicker than this coronavirus does. Because all it takes is for you to see something or to hear something, and automatically, you if you're not careful, you can be overwhelmed with fear. Fear of the future is one of the most uh, widespread fears that is happening right now, because no one has all of the answers. Many times we look to the government or we look to the, the, the health officials to try to give us answers, but they are searching for answers just as we are. The truth of the matter is only God knows and understands exactly what's happening. People can do their very best to try to find the origin or try to find where did this come from, but ultimately only God knows the reason why and only God understands why this had to happen. We as the people of God, we don't respond in fear because our, our hope is built, as the psalm says, on nothing less yes. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So that means that we are not, we are not basing our, our confidence on what the government says or what the president says. Our hope lies in Jesus Christ. And he is the rock, the firm foundation that cannot and will not be moved. So that means before this virus started to spread, God was in control. And now, as the virus is going all around the world, God is in control. And after they somehow get rid of this spread of the virus, God will still be in control. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, God reminds us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So when troubles arise, instead of complaining, we should do as the scripture in Ecclesiastes said, consider how God is working in the midst of these unfortunate events. God specializes in bringing something out of nothing. As Minister Jeremy alluded to earlier, that God asked Ezekiel, he said, can these bones live? And he was asking a question in the midst of a valley full of dry bones. Life had long left these bones, but God was asking the question, can life be brought back to these seemingly dead bones? And of course, Ezekiel, he didn't want to say the wrong thing, so he just said, Lord, you know, you know the answer to that. I'm not going to say no, because you, you know, you know all things, so whatever you say is what it is. 
And God commanded them to speak and to breathe life back into these bones. And of course, they began to become a living soul once again. When Jesus was born, Jesus didn't come as the Jews expected him to in a palace or in, in, in a very royal way. He was born in a, in a manger, which is in a cow trough. So in the most uh, uh, the, the, the most forgotten about circumstances, the, the smelliest place, this is where the Savior of the world was born. And when Jesus began his ministry, and as he began to call his disciples, he went and he called Philip. And Philip, understanding that this was the Messiah that they have been expecting, he went to go call his friend Nathaniel. And he told Nathaniel that Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, has come. Let's go follow him. But his friend Nathaniel, he had his he had his worries or he had his skepticism. He was like, wait a minute. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Who has ever come out of Nazareth that's ever been successful? What great thing has ever come out of that place? And I believe that that's what many people are wondering today. Can any good thing come out of this, this, this trauma that's happening? Can any good thing come out of this tragedy? Can any good thing come out of the world being shut down? But I want to remind you that when God is in it, there is no limit. When God is in it, great things can happen. No matter how bleak the situation may seem, God is still able to be glorified in the midst of, of tragedy. I also want to remind you that man's inability is God's opportunity. I want to say that one more time. Man's inability is God's opportunity. So at the time when you feel like you can't figure out what to do and the government can't figure out what to do, this is God's opportunity to be glorified. The scripture tells us that when, when hard times come, we must consider the work of God. Consider how is God working in the midst of this. Instead of wondering where is God or wondering does God really care or wondering is God really able to turn things around, you should instead consider what is God doing in the midst of this. Because I want to remind you, God is always at work. God is always on the job. God is always on the throne. So no matter what's happening, God is still at work. And he's not working in the sense of scrambling to try to come up with a solution. He's not working in a way that he's trying to figure out, how can I make this look like I know what I'm doing? No. One thing that I have to remind myself whenever troubles rise is nothing surprises God. Right. So at the moment that God spoke and he said, let there be light, God knew that in February, March of 2020, and for however long that it will go on, that this coronavirus will be all throughout the earth, that churches would have to uh, shift and do things differently, and, and people will be worried about how the rent would be paid, how their bills would be paid, or how they were going to keep the church doors open. Before the beginning of time, God had a plan. And we as the people of God have to trust in that plan. Trust that he is sovereign and all-knowing and he knows exactly why this happened and he knows exactly what he wants to do through this crisis. Amen. James said in James chapter 1 verse 2 through 4, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I believe that the important part of this passage is, of course, we understand that patience, is, you know, it, it, it has to do what it needs to do. But many times we try to rush the process. We want God to answer us right now. We want God to come through for us right now. If it was up to us, we would never go through hard times. If it was up to us, we would never go through any type of affliction or trouble because we ideally would like for life to be comfortable. Whether we want to admit it or not, every one of us would prefer for life to be comfortable. But the psalmist David, after he had been through some things in his life, he was able to say, you know what? It was good for me that I was afflicted mm -hmm. so that I might learn thy statutes. 
In other words, he's saying that it was good that I went through hard times. It was good that I had some sleepless nights. It was good that I had to worry about what was going to happen tomorrow because that taught me to trust in God. That taught me to know God on a deeper level. And many times when things are going good, we can get comfortable to the point where we're not really truly putting our full trust in God. Because when everything is going well, when you have a well-paying job, you can begin to trust in that job and believe that it's your job that's helping you to have this comfortable life. But oftentimes God would have to pull the rug from underneath your feet and allow you to get shaken up a little bit and you have to start to... to feel and try to figure out what's going on and when that happens you'll learn that your job is only a resource God is your source so that's why many people today are very worried about what's going to happen my source has dried up I, I, I know because I'm a musician that many musicians in the musician community are very worried because they have many gigs that are de dependent on their, their talent and their ability. But if everyone is staying home, they can't go to these concerts. They can't play at the churches that they normally play for. So many of us are worried. But I want to encourage you today, instead of worrying, trust in God. Trust that God knew that this was coming. Trust that God loves you enough that he is going to take care of you. I believe that God wants to remind us that our job is just a resource. God wants to remind us that he is ultimately in control. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't typically happen when good things are happening. Sometimes it takes hard times for us to be reminded. And many of us have become so distracted by our day-to-day -day lives that we have not taken the time out to pray or to seek God the way that we are supposed to. Amen. So sometimes God will allow us to have nothing to do so that we can make the choice to consecrate ourselves, to seek God while he may be found. But the problem is, when we do get all of this time, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to choose to allow Netflix to get all of our time? Are we going to choose to allow eating snacks and all these other things that we need to take all of our time? Are we going to truly be intentional about seeking God during this time that we have? In the, uh, the Passion Translation of James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, it says, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up the power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. So, James is telling us that when you're going through the hardest time of your life, count it all joy. How am I going to be joyful when I don't know where the next meal is coming from? How am I going to be joyful when I'm so worried about what's happening in the world, when I'm so worried about what's going on and if my kids are going to be safe and if my house is going to stay intact? How am I going to be joyful? But see, I believe that if you're asking that question, you're probably getting joy and happiness confused. Because the thing about happiness, happiness is based on circumstances. Happiness is based on your kids behaving. Happiness is based on you getting a raise on the job. Happiness for me is based on eating your favorite meal. Happiness is based on circumstances. Certain things have to happen the right way in order for you to be happy. But joy is consistent no matter what happens with your circumstances. As the song says, joy is something that the world didn't give you and the world can't take it away. So no matter what's happening, we have to trust that God has put this joy on the inside of us. So we have to choose to, to tap into that joy that no matter what's happening on happening around me, I have the joy of the Lord. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when I'm weak, I can tap into the joy of the Lord. I'm not worrying like the world does because I have this joy on the inside of me that's strengthening me, that's giving me the courage to keep going forward, that's giving me the confidence in my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once again, let patience have her perfect work 
means that we cannot rush the process. Allow God to do exactly what he wants to do. Consider that God intentionally allowed this to happen so that his name can be glorified. You know, I, I've seen it said that many times when we wonder, you know, why are my prayers feeling like they're not being answered? What, what, is, what is it about the way that I'm praying that I can't seem to get an answer with God? And the answer is, maybe our prayers are focused on our own wants and desires and not focused on the glory of God. Mm. If you can change your prayers around to pray always that God would be glorified in whatever situation you're in. If you can turn your prayers around to, to, to pray, Lord, I pray that you would bless me on my job so that you can be glorified. Use me on, on my job so that I can be a witness for your glory. Lord, I pray that you would bless me with finances so that I'll be able to give to people that need it. So that I can be a blessing to those that need to be blessed and that you would be glorified. Because at the end of the day, God is going to be glorified. Yes. And if we are in his will, if we are submitting ourselves to his will, then that will be our truest desire that God would be glorified in everything. Yes. One of my favorite scriptures, probably my favorite scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 7, where it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And many of us stop there, but verse 7 is also very important because it says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So this is the part where we get uh, we get confused sometimes because many of us try to figure things out on our own. Many of us try to use our own human logic to try to say, okay, well, I've seen things happen this way in the past, so this must be the way that things are going to work out. But we must understand that as humans, we only see what's directly in front of us and what happened in the past. But God is sovereign. God is all-knowing. He's in the past. He's in the present. And he's already in our future. So that means he's already in the place where this whole epidemic or pandemic is over and he already knows exactly how glory is going to be brought to his name. So instead of trying to figure things out and being wise in our own eyes, we must make the choice to submit ourselves to his plan, to submit ourselves to his will, to allow him to work in us and through us. Once again, I will remind you, nothing surprises God. Proverbs 16, verse 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord di directeth his steps. And another translation says that we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And that's so true. I have to remind myself that all the time. Remember on New Year's Eve, how optimistic everyone was? Everyone was coming in with these great plans about what was going to happen this year. And of course, nothing is wrong with that. But there's a human saying that says, we, when we, if we ever want to make God laugh, all we have to do is show him our plans. Because meanwhile, we're making all these resolutions and we're making all these plans. And God is like, okay, we'll see. All right. You, you know, we'll, I have something that you don't see happening. Just wait on it. And here we are, not too much, not too far into the year, and already so many plans have shifted. And so many of us are very distraught or very worried that, man, I, I really put a lot of time and effort into this plan. I really wanted for this plan to be successful. But God is saying, just trust me. My plan was intact all along. My plan was intact. My plans never shifted. I'm not scrambling to try to come up with a plan B. My plan A has been intact from the very beginning of time. Just trust in me. See, not only is the world afraid, but like I said earlier, many churches are worried today because with us having to go strictly live stream, this is this could cause many different things to happen in the church. And many pastors are losing sleep at night because they're worried about their congregation and they're worried about the the the. the the momentum that they have been building and, and, and the, what, what has been going on prior to this pandemic possibly being uh, canceled or possibly being put on hold. But I want to remind you, in, in, in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 9, in the, uh, a different translation, it says, Will I bring a baby to the point of birth and not deliver it? 
God is asking that question, will I bring a baby to the point of birth and not allow it to be born? Or will I, or will I who deliver close the womb, says your God? So God is asking the question, if I started this thing, you think I'm not able to finish it? Mm -hmm. The word of God tells us that he that has begun a good work is able to perform it. Yeah. So God is not going to start something that he didn't intend to finish. So even if some unforeseen crisis happens, God still has an unshakable plan to complete the work that he started. Right. Amen. So even as Nathaniel was asking, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of this crisis? Can any good thing come out of me losing my job? Can any good thing come out of me struggling in this way? We, as believers, we hold on to this. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things, somebody say all things, all things work together for good. Can any good thing come out of this? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. So we have to answer that question. Can any good thing come out of this? Yes, all things work together. So even if it's bad now, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Jesus has given us the reassurance that he is in control. John 16, verse 33, he says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So no matter what we face, things could get worse before they get better. But through it all, trust that Jesus has overcome. He has conquered everything that we could ever have to face. And as long as we're holding on to his hand, he's not going to drop us. He's not going to allow us to go under because he cares about us. He told us that even the very hairs on our head are numbered. If he's that intimately involved in our lives, why would he let you fall? They're not just counted. He doesn't know the number. He doesn't just know the number when you were born. He knows how much fell off this morning as you were brushing your hair. The hairs on your head are numbered. He loves us so much and he cares about us. One thing that I heard before that's, you know, because I'm a sports fan, it, it really relates to me. In the fourth quarter of a close game, you're going to put in the best players that you have. But on a very good team, there's usually one player that you define as clutch. That means that if the ball is in their hand, then you can... You can believe and have hope and confidence that something good is going to happen. Even if you're losing uh, by two or three or four at the end of the game, if the ball is in their hand, you can have confidence that something good is going to happen. Not only does the coach have confidence, not only does do his fellow teammates have confidence, but if they're at home and you get that, that ball into the, the clutch player's hand, all of a sudden the crowd will begin to stand up. The crowd will get excited because... They're, they're not standing up because they already know the outcome, but they're standing up because the person that they trust in to deliver them to a victory has the ball in their hands. Now, for all they know, that person could dribble the ball off of their foot and they go out of bounds and they lose the game. But because of their past history, they have confidence in this clutch player that something good is going to happen. So if, if we're looking at it with our perfect God, God has the ball in his hands. That ball is our life. We don't know what he's going to do with it, but we have confidence based on what he's done before that he is going to bring us to the victory. And because God is perfect, he's not going to miss the game winning shot. Because God is perfect, he's not going to fumble the ball. He's not going to turn the ball over. So trust that God knows what he's doing. Things will get tight. Things will get uh, strenuous on, in, our, in our lives. But we must trust that God has us in his hands. And I want to close with this scripture. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Where it says. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea I will help thee. Yea I will. Uphold thee with the right hand. Of my righteousness. This is God's promise to us. He's telling us, don't fear. Don't allow fear to grip you. Don't allow fear to overwhelm you. 
Because when you're overwhelmed by fear, you can't see straight. Everything that you see is going to scare you. Everything that you see is going to cause you to want to have more fear. But he's telling us, fear not. Why? Because I am with you. Amen? And if God is walking beside you, you have no reason to fear. You have no reason to worry. Even if you lose your job, God is saying, I am with you. If it gets to the point where your house is in jeopardy of, of you losing it, God is saying, fear not, I am with you. Not only am I with you, but I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. So once again, God is saying, I've got your life in my hands. And you may not know what I'm going to do with it, but just be confident that you're going to end up in victory. That no matter what happens, you're going to be victorious because I'm going to make the game winning shot. I'm going to bring this thing to, to, to pass. I'm going to make sure that everything works out for your good. So if you've been worried, if you've been uh, overwhelmed with the news media and everything that's going on, I want to remind you today, trust in God. Don't be afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but instead he's given us power and love and a sound mind. Perfect love casts away all fear. So in fear, the Bible says, has torment. So that means it'll keep you up at night. It'll cause you to not act as you normally would. But get rid of that fear. Give it to God. Cast your cares on him and say, Lord, I know that you care for me. I know that you care about me. I know that you created me and you made me fearfully and wonderfully made. You will take care of me through all this. My job is not my source. It's just a resource. You are my source and I will choose not to fear, but to trust in God. I pray that what I said, something I said here will be able to minister to someone, to cause you to be confident, to have hope, to trust in God, to not be afraid and believe that he will come through for you. Amen. Even though we have shifted our services and things are going a little bit different, we still have water available for anyone that needs to be baptized in the name of Jesus. If you need someone to pray for you, this, these doors are still open and you are still able to come here. We will pray with you. We will encourage you. We will remind you that God is ultimately in control. Amen. I'm going to hand it over to you. Well, let's look to the hills as the psalmist says. From whence cometh our help? Our help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And he went on to say, He would not suffer our foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber or sleep. Isn't that reassuring to know that the God that we serve, He doesn't have to sleep. He's not relaxing somewhere on the beach, in some tropical place. No, 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 no. He is on the throne. And he has all of this in control. So we're going to continue to pray for each other. We're going to pray for the world. We're going to pray for the leaders who are making decisions that, that, that they would come up with the right, what God wants them to do. Not what they want to do, but what God wants them to do. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I pray today in Jesus' name that his richest blessing will be poured out in your life. We're going to continue to pray for those by the different viruses. We're going to continue to pray for our world, our leadership in Jesus' name. And thank you for tuning in today.